Well, I'm Steve Poppy, horticulture scientist here at the West Central Research and Outreach Center. Welcome to our 2020 Virtual Horticulture Night. We wish we could have all you people here, but because of the issues we're, we're having here now, this is the best way we can provide you with the beauty of the garden. Um, and the garden is open now. Uh, opened in early July, and so you're welcome to come and view the beauty of the garden. Just follow some of the rules we've pasted on some of the trails and signs and whatnot to enjoy the beauty of the garden so we can remain open. But this year, I'm going to be uh, walking you through the garden, showing you a lot of the uh, annual flowers as part of our display and trial garden. We're trialing at a tremendous amount of flowers this year. We're really surprised that the plant breeding companies have sent us so many flowers to trial during these down times, but we're excited about that. So there's about 450 different varieties of annual flowers. They're all labeled for you to enjoy. So come and enjoy the beauty of the garden on this virtual horse. We're going to talk about some of the annual flowers uh, this evening uh, that are, are part of our trial and display garden uh, here at the West Central Research and Outreach Center. Uh, we'll start out in uh, one of our beds with uh, some of the plants that we've already been taking data on and they look very nice for this time of year. Um, Osteospearmin and Argoranthemum. They are, uh, years ago, these particular plants were, didn't tolerate the heat real well. But as you well know, we've had, you know, middle 80s, low 90s for many, many days within the last two, three weeks, and they're still flowering. So some of these new cultivars are really tolerating the heat quite well. Um, Argoranthemum is related to the perennial uh, chrysanthemum, only this is an annual plant. Um, it does well in full sun and semi-shaded areas. The Osteospearmin, located right next door, it also has a daisy-like flower, and so they work real well in combination with each, with each other. Um, so if you're wanting to grow those uh, particular plants, put them together in, in your garden. Another great plant that has been around forever, the Celosia, or 50 years ago it was called Coxcomb, located right here. This one is called uh, Kilos Fire Red. Um, Celosia like it hot and dry. They don't like it wet. And uh, we've had especially some dry conditions here within the last few weeks since it's transplanted late May. Uh, Celosia should not be planted any earlier than say about mid-May. And the reason for that is they do not like cold soil. They like warm soil and dry conditions. And so if you have a spot <coughs> that is dry, hot, south side, west side of a building or whatever, uh, plant Celosia. And this one is, is uh, doing very well right now. It's very compact. As you can see, it's extremely uniform. And we hope that color, we'll see later uh, in the year, hopefully that color does not fade out. But it's really looking uh, intense right now. Here's a marigold that's doing quite well this year in early July. The thing that really impresses me about this particular marigold, big top yellow, orange, and gold, is its stability. We have had about two, three weeks ago, we had a tremendous amount of wind for about four or five days, sweep through the edge of the garden here. And the things that are doing quite well are these marigolds, they're standing up. So they have true stability in our west central region of Minnesota. But uh, fully double flowers, as you can see, the flowers are blooming on the top of the plant. Uh, not too many marigold flowers hidden inside the foliage. That's a true feature of this particular type of marigold called the Big Top Series. For me are impatience, and these impatience are the Beacon Series, started from seed. They love the shade. Uh, for the past number of years, a number of the plant breeders have uh, failed in uh, having adequate uh, shade loving impatience growing from seed because of a disease called downy mildew which has been devastating to these types of impatience but now they've come up with a variety the beacon series that is resistant uh, to that downy mildew disease which is a water mold and it can be devastating uh, in many, many areas of the country uh, we haven't experienced it here but if you're growing in other regions of the state of Minnesota and experience this I would recommend growing the beacon series also goes great great in a container or a hanging basket. Here's a petunia 
just a knockout color right now, and it will continue like this for the rest of the season. We grew this last year, uh, Color Rush Pink uh, Petunia uh, is was a top performer in 2000, top 10 performer in 2019. But as you can see, just uh, immense amount of flowers. Each plant will grow about say 24 to 30 inches wide. So you don't need a whole lot of plants to grow this uh, terrific petunia called uh, Color Rush Pink. Here we have growing in these containers this year is Scavola. Uh, two varieties, uh, Whirlwind Blue and Whirlwind Blue Improved. So a lot of the plant breeders, they come up with this great variety, but then they try and improve in some of the genetics and whatnot. So we'll see how this improved variety of Scavola uh, performs this year. The Scavola is a, a drought tolerant type plant, uh, works great in combination with other flowers, but uh, here we're growing it in uh, about an 18 inch uh, container for this year. But as you can see, just prolific flowering, very uniform, vigor is great, uh, a top performer uh, in our garden this year in the containers. Showcasing here some flowers that are growing in our wall. Uh, this is a uh, block structure that is right next to our parking lot. It is a fairly warm site, so we're trying to grow plants uh, as part of our trial garden that can uh, uh, grow in a little drier location. So we've got uh, Lobelaria. The variety name is uh, Moonlight Night. Uh, Lobelaria is related to Sweet Alyssum. But the lobal area is produced by vegetative cuttings where sweet alyssum is grown from seed. But a tremendous plant that has a fragrance to it. Uh, that's why we planted it to the entrance to the garden here. If you walk down into the uh, entrance of the garden, you might smell a little bit of fragrance from this lobal area. But a great plant, continues to flower all season long where sweet alyssum normally shuts down about midsummer. Growing behind it, we have Pomia Sweet Caroline Raven, as you can see, it is intense. It is almost black, uh, a dark burgundy, uh, also called sweet potato vine. Very vigorous grower. Uh, used in combinations with, uh, with baskets and containers and whatnot. But here we've got it growing in the wall because it does like this dry location. Um, these plants tend to get a little bit of out of hand, but don't be afraid to cut them back and just uh, maintain them so they have a nice, neat appearance. We have a new feature in our garden which was constructed last fall. Uh, it was uh, remodeled. We used to have a block wall here, but we brought in some new features and it's uh, unbelievable. It really looks sharp as the new entrance to our garden. But the reason we have the wall planting here, it is a warmer site and more dry. Uh, we need to grow certain plants that uh, don't require as much moisture, such as geraniums. Geraniums in your home garden don't like it soggy. They like a dry environment overwater them. But one very nice variety here that's been around for a few years is just uh, throughout the world is the Calliope series. This one is called Large Dark Red. As you can see just very intense red, really nice geranium that's growing in this wall. And we have many other geraniums that are also growing in this wall that you can see at any time when you visit the garden. Another exciting plant that is new for us this year is called this Brachdiantha. Uh, not too common, it is straw flower, uh, Grandiva Gold, and as you can see, it's a really nice yellow flower. Not too common in the flower industry, but a true yellow. And the neat thing about this is, with straw flowers, there have been problems with mildew in the past. This is resistant to that mildew. And another great feature is, if you're into drying flowers, the straw flower can be dried and used as arrangement throughout the uh, rest of the uh, season, not just in the summer. Here we have growing in another bed uh, is a great petunia. Uh, it has been with us for probably about uh, four to five years. The, the company keeps bringing it back because it is such a super performer. It is probably their number one bestseller called Supertunia Vista Bubblegum. A, a long word, but just remember the bubblegum in the name, a trailing, spreading type petunia that is growing just as you can see right now in early July is just full of blossoms. These types, particular type of uh, petunias, just uh, don't require any deadheading because they're so vigorous and growing so fast 
that they just cover up the dead flowers and keep bringing on new growth. You can grow this particular plant in, also in a container. Uh, it does well uh, and it will grow about, probably about three foot wide. Growing in a container, make sure you feed it with a water soluble fertilizer so it never runs out of gas. Also growing in the same bed is, are some dahlias. We received a huge number of dahlias this year from one of the plant breeding companies. A lot of these have numbers on them. They don't have a name on them yet, so we're trying them, we're seeing how they do. But as you can see, just a tremendous amount of flowers and buds on this particular dahlia. Uh, they do very great right now. A little bit more maintenance with dahlias when you grow them. Uh, they'll do, they will need to be deadheaded and the spent flowers will have to be removed to bring new foliage and new buds uh, back into blossom. But a lot of dahlias, take a look at them this year in the horticulture display guide. Here we have a display of uh, annual flowers and the uh, spreading, trailing type of petunias. Many different varieties growing here. But it all started back in 1995 when this first variety right here called Purple Way was the first introduction. It was also an All-American selection winner, meaning it uh, was a, a winner and it had superior performance throughout the North American continent. But th this was the first. Now there have been many improvements since then with the spreading and trailing type petunias. This purple wave has started from seed. But as you can see, there are some openings in the flower, in, in the foliage and whatnot. So that was a bad point with this first introduction. Now they've improved on that, and now plants are covered entirely with flowers. An improvement over the first purple wave. Another type of plant that has really come on strong in the last number of years is the ornamental grasses. Now these are annual ornamental grasses, not perennials, and they are just great uh, to showcase any type of flower. As you can see some of the, the maroon foliages, the variegated foliages and whatnot. These are really at a small stage right now. They're going to grow anywhere between about 30 and 40 inches tall. Have some flowers on them, but uh, a great plant to incorporate into the background of your flower garden, which will go with almost any type of annual flower. Here we have a new petunia growing in our display trial garden this year called Amour king of hearts kind of a different type of flower uh, kind of an eye catcher but the unique feature of this if you look at this individual petal here there are distinct five red marks on there that are in the shape of a heart outlined by this white in between very unique feature in this plant and very attractive there's also some other ones here that are in a red and a yellow throat there are also kind of that same feature with that heart as part of the flower petal Here we're standing in our gazebo, a shelter where you can uh, be in the shade, a picnic table and whatnot and enjoy the beauty of the game in a protected shelter. Uh, but some of the flowers around here, some of the calvacoa, uh, argyranthemum, but I'd like to talk a little bit about the verbena, which is the border plant that's coming around the front of this particular garden. Um, verbena, this Enduriscape pink bicolor is an All-American selection winner, which we've been talking about here earlier but truly uh, fantastic verbena. And the reason is it was selected as an AAS. It, it likes the heat and also if you grow this, it will tolerate below freezing temperatures and continue to bloom. So it has that feature. Each plant will grow about 20 inches wide. Uh, nice plant and uh, also another great feature of this plant, it is deer resistant. So look for this plant. Uh, truly a great plant that can be used as an edging. Uh, or border plant also works great in a hanging basket or container. These are the calvacoa we have hanging around the gazebo here. Uh, calvacoa are called million bells, have been around for a while, developed by a, a breeder from Japan that actually personally came to our garden many, many years ago. So got some personal relationship with these. But uh, these particular calvacoa are doing quite well at this time of, of season, early July. As you can see, the unique uh, flower with the yellow throat on this uh, variety called Clockwise Clockwork Blue. And this one, always like yellow in the calabacoa, uh, called Gloomtastic Yellow. Um, calabacoa are not always easy to grow, but if you grow them in a soilless media, make sure they stay somewhat moist, don't let them dry out. You should feed them regularly with a water-soluble fertilizer so you increase the growth. But we found we have a very unique pot here uh, that is available through Home Garden. Uh, 
uh, it has a one gallon reservoir in the bottom that holds water and we fill it through an opening in the pot right here and it doesn't actually directly water the top of the plant so the water uh, goes back up through the root system and it keeps it evenly moist which has really been successful with uh, growing calabacone here at the West Central Research and Outreach Center Horticulture Display Garden.